Alrighty, let's do a simple little picture today that'll just give you an idea of how this fantastic technique works. Hey guys, it's Fabian from Fabian's Magic Altars again. Uh, thanks for joining me on the second part of my altering tutorial. If you haven't watched the first part, I'll put a link somewhere over here. It's a video where I cover uh, the type of altars and what supplies I use. It's got some information if you want to get started on altering. On the second video, I want to cover a couple things. The first thing, mock-ups or reference images and how you get them onto the card. It's, you know, this, these are the images you find online and you, you think it's cool and you want to put it on a card. How do you do that? Uh, what's the easiest way to do that? And I'll also go over some of the techniques I use to actually apply paint on the card or start painting the card and some tips. And at the end of the video, I have a small giveaway for those of you that want to get starting on altering or, you know, are brand new to altering and are looking for a little help. Like I said in part one of my tutorial, I want to apologize for any funny words or wrong technical terms I use throughout the video. But now let's get started. I've got a lot to cover, so I want to do it in the shortest amount of time. Alright, let's get started on mockups or reference images. Um, I use that term to describe images I find online and I want to put them on a card. Um, before we go into any further details, um, some of you might be asking or wondering whether this is legal, whether I can take an image that I find online and paint it on a card and then sell the card for profit. Um, I'm going to speak from um, the based on the research that I've done and in terms of being here in the United States where I live. Um, based on an article that I'm going to put in the description below, um, from what I understand is that this is an artistic expression of somebody else's work and it's considered free speech. So I'm okay, it's okay for me to paint it and sell it for profit as long as I'm not making massive reproductions of, of the same thing. As long as it's a one of a kind um, and as long as I'm not preventing the original artist from making money then it's okay. I think the article mentions that a, a one of a kind is different than reproduction. Reproduction I believe it's um, mass quantities uh, you know like using a printer and making multiple copies of the same thing that the original artist made. That that would be illegal and I totally see how that's considered illegal. I like to reference the image that I use. I, I like to reference the original artist if I if I can give them credit, if I know who it was, if I um, see their name online. Sometimes it's hard for me to do that because I can't associate the image with an artist so um, I, I try my best. Um, but I always recommend that you credit the original artist. If it's an un unpublished image, um, you know, they don't have that on Google or anything like that, you should definitely ask for permission before using it. That could be definitely frowned upon if you use an unpublished uh, image on your altar. With that being said, what's in a uh, mock-up? Let me show you one. So I printed this image out. I put it on a copy of this swamp, and I want to put this image onto this card. Um, I'll go into details how I did this in a little bit. I'll show you a couple ways that you can um, get the right size and the image onto this mock-up so you could easily transfer it to the card itself. Um, I just use regular paper and I just use my printer. Um, low, low quality settings on the printer for an easy image like this but if it's something more detailed I like to use um, higher um, settings, higher quality settings. Um, yeah, so let me show you on the computer um, how I quickly do this. There's there's a few things that you can use to make a mock-up. Um, you can use Photoshop. You can use, uh, I believe Mac users use GIMP, I believe is the name of that software. Um, you can use Paint. It's a little bit hard to use Paint. I use it at the beginning. Um, or you can use what I use. Uh, I just use straight up Microsoft Word doesn't seem like the type of tool that you would use to to do this but I find it that it's quick and easy and if I have something complicated though I I'll, I'll, will use Photoshop I have an older version of Photoshop when Adobe was giving it out for free so I managed to grab one and um, it works for me it's it's an old version but it works for for doing what 
you know I need to do for a reference image. So let's let me show you how to do a mockup. Okay, so here I've got the example of how to do a mockup. Uh, I'm going to take the image that I found of the swamp that I'm going to alter online and the image of Rigby. And I'm going to be placing the image of Rigby on top of the swamp. The first thing I have to do is resize the swamp to be the actual size of a card, which is 3.5 inches by 2.5. And, a half. and that, that should be the standard size for a card. Um, you can adjust this after if, if you need to. Then I'm going to click on the image of Rigby and I'm going to change the text wrapping to be in front of text. That will allow me to move the image over the swamp um, at free will. Then I can also, you know, rotate this or flip it. Um, and I want this image to look the other way, so I just flip it vertically. And then we have to get rid of all this excess, uh, excess uh, picture. We're just going to crop it. And you just want to re try to concentrate. Uh, yeah, you just want to focus on what you're what you're actually gonna be altering. Okay, now that I'm able to just uh, I can move this really. I'll just drag it over the card, and you'll notice that you'll notice that it becomes transparent once I do, and that's useful to see where the image is gonna be laid on a card. So see how I can still see the background if I drag it without dropping it. And that looks good to me right there. So I think I'll show you guys one more time. Um, a little bit zoomed in. But if you take the image out and then drag it and hold, um, you can see the background. It becomes transparent. That's how I do it in Word. Uh, the, we can change the transparency of the image in Photoshop easier, but I just find Word to be really quick and easy. Now that we've got that, you can um, do a print screen or use the snipping tool. I think it's um, it's a Windows uh, app. And just it's gonna take like a screenshot of this. just grab the image as close to the edge as possible copy it and now you can drop it in this file and resize that to whatever you want if you want a little bit smaller um, or bigger you can just resize both the the card and the reference image at the same time You can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you need if you need to resize the mock-up. And that's it, guys. That's how I make the mock-ups in Microsoft Word. Okay, now that I've shown you how to do a mock-up on the computer, all you have to do is print it out, uh, maybe print out several sizes, and then pick the one that uh, most closely resembles the size of your card. Um, so this one fits pretty well, just from the first looks. So I'm going to use this copy that I've cut up prior to this video and um, I'm gonna start the process to transfer it to the card so the first thing I do is um, I have to put this card down on this just piece of paper with a uh, painter tape which is not very adhesive so it won't damage the card and just the tips of the card need to get covered there we go and then another step I like to do is make sure that this is actually uh, an okay size for the transfer, that when I actually transfer this to the card, it'll, it'll be in the correct spot, the correct layout. So what I do is I take a pair of scissors, and I'm gonna show you this carefully. You want to line up, for example, in this case, the border of the, the edges of the frame to the edges of the frame on the card. So if you if line up the lines, you know, you in a couple spots, then you know that you've got to line up correctly. So this card, I don't need this top part, so I'm just going to cut this right over here. And for example, I don't need this part either. And it's got a nice couple lines right there that I, if I line them up, I'll know I've done it correctly. I can also do it over here. And just, it, there's no right way to do it. Just get, 
get creative, see what lines you need to make sure they match it, and then you should be good to go. So, oh man, I hope you guys can see this. But if I were to line that up right there, and there we go. So you can't tell down here, I should have cut this a little bit further down here. So I'm gonna do that. There we go. So if you line this up like this, and it's a little bit off. See, that's why I do this step. It's a little bit off on the bottom right. The top is perfectly matched, but the bottom right is not lined up correctly. However, I, I know that I'm not going to care too much about if I miss transferring this bottom part of Rigby, which is the character I'm painting. Um, but that's okay. So if the bottom is not perfectly lined up, that, that's okay for this image. If you're transferring a different image, you might want to grab another copy and try to realign it or shrink it, resize it, and try again. But I think this would work. So now that I've got the cutout, I know how to align it on a card. The next step is to use the carbon tracing me um, carbon tracing method. So we're going to put pencil or graphite, lead, whatever you want to call it, um, on the back of this. And then we'll paint a base layer on here and transfer the image. Okay, so I'm going to apply um, charcoal. I could do this with a pencil, but I've got this charcoal sticks and it just makes it a lot quicker um, to the back of the card. So just grab it with a tissue or something so I don't get my fingers dirty. And you only want to do this where the image is. There's no need to cover the whole, the whole mock-up that you've done, just, just where the image is. And I like to make sure that I've got the whole area covered by putting it to the light and making sure that the charcoal is covering most of the image. I'm missing some of the tail, so I'll add some to the, I don't know if you guys can see this on the video. Yeah, I'll add, I'll add some of the top part over here for the tail. And then I'll use the same piece of paper. Sometimes I, I use gloves if I have them around. Um, but paper works, tissue paper toilet paper, paper towel works fine. So that should be good enough. I think it covers the whole image. I'm missing a little bit on the tail again, on the lower side of the tail. So I'll add, I'll add a little bit more. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to make sure the back's covered. So how is this going to work? So once you do that, I'll show you an example right here. You're going to grab just a pencil. I use a mechanical pencil, which has a um, 0.5 millimeter lead. So this lets me get into the small details. But pretend this is your card with the base coat, which I'll show you how to do that next. Um, you're going to put the image on there. And if I were to trace, for example, a happy face over here. If there's charcoal behind that area, it'll transfer it. So it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, I think. But let me see if I can do a close up. There it is. The smiley face. It transfers pretty easily. Um, yes, there's carbon tracing paper out there that some people like to use in the middle, but I think that's a just waste of time, waste of paper. You can just do this with a, with a pencil. You can, you can do this with a thicker pencil though, don't do this with a lead a mechanical pencil, but yeah, you can do this with a, with a pencil, cover the whole back, and then trace. So that's, that's step one of getting started over here with the um, mock-up transfer. Actually, I think, I don't know what step that is, but anyways. Okay, now that the mock-up is done, Let's get into techniques and painting on the actual card. 
So the first thing I need to do is put on a base coat. We do that by mixing carbon black and titanium white. Uh, this bottle is almost empty, so I have it upside down to see if I can get any more paint out of it. Um, I'm going to use a, one of the bigger brushes I own to put down the, the base coat. This is a flat um, brush. I don't know what size it is because I'm not sure what that says on there but anyway it's a flat brush this is a cheaper brush it's not one of the most expensive brushes I own um, and here's my wet palette I've already added I've already added water to this because I usually do that in the bathroom sink um, so yeah this is about half of this is covered in water and the sponge has soaked up um, a lot of it, so it's very firm and heavy. Um, I've got a cup over here to wash my brush really quick. I got a couple of strips of um, paper towel. I'll show you why I like these strips and not a whole sheet of paper towel. And I've got a sheet of this palette paper. So again, my previous video I told you guys that this is just baking paper, wax paper, parchment paper but I like to buy these pre-cut sheets. So if you're using a wet palette for the first time, I've got a tip number one over here. Um, what I like to do, some people like to cover this whole thing in paper towel because they say it's too much water, but uh, I like it the way, I like the way it just, no layers in between, just the paper and the paper towel and the, the sponge. So if I put this on here, watch, it's going to roll up on, on the sides towards towards the center. And this is because the paper is dry. So you can just keep your fingers up here in the corners and just run your wet finger across the edge and bam, it stops rolling. And most of this is dry. You don't want to put a lot of water in here because um, you don't want to do it until you have the paints ready to mix and stuff. So I just roll the sides of this paper towel right there um, you can even flatten this out a little bit like that and back here like that there we go now we got a surface that will keep our paints wet for the whole time we're altering after a few hours, if you're working on their bright lights like I do, um, the water will start to evaporate. So just add a little bit, lift up, and add a little bit of water. Just a little bit. Um, if you add too much, what would happen is that the water will um, start pouring into the top of the paper and it'll mess up your paints. So it'll make your paints too wet. So you don't want to do it. Okay, so let Let's add the the white paint. Oh man, I guess I'm out. It's a, yeah, a little bit more in there. Yep. So, like I said in the last video, I think this is the f I've I haven't run out of any of the original paints I bought. I think this will be the first one that runs out of that eight paint set so they last a long time at least the way I'll, I, I guess I don't alter that often but they've lasted a long time for me years all right oh my gosh that should be that should be plenty of, of white um, and then I'm just gonna wash the brush so that the paint doesn't dry on that okay then I've got carbon black and I'm only gonna add a tiny drop because this is uh, pretty strong paint so um, I guess pigments I don't know I don't know what the technical term is but I've got my white titanium white and carbon black so when mixing the gray the gray paint when you're trying to mix these for the gray base um, 
you want to go on a lighter gray if you plan on putting any yellows, oranges, red on top of that. Um, you can do a darker gray for any darker colors or, you know, I just do a neutral gray. I'll do a neutral gray right now. So I'll take some white. And here's another trick that I that I use is how I paint. But instead of dipping the brush in water, I just slightly touch it right there on the paper towel. And just a tiny touch. And that picks up enough paint to get this uh, a little bit more fluid, more wet, more thin. And then just grab a little bit of black. It's a tiny bit. Like, I'm not even... I'm only touching the tip of the brush to that paint and that picks up enough. And I add a little bit more water and you want to get a consistency that's that's pretty um, similar to like milk I guess. That's what I like, that's what I hear people say. Um, so there's a lighter gray, um, neutral gray and I guess if you add more it's dark gray. So. I mean, this is the this is the base layer, so, and the and the reference image is, it's in that detail, so I think this will work. You know, what, maybe I'll make it lighter so you guys can see the pencil later if it doesn't show well on camera. All right, I think this is a little bit closer. Man, it's really hard to try to get everything on camera, and to paint from like two feet behind the camera. Okay, so this may take you some practice, but. You kind of have to try to match the area that you're going to be painting on, um, on on here on the card. You have to try to get the same amount of gray paint around here. You'll have to do some cleaning up with the toothpick after, but if you if you get good at it, um, that you know you'll reduce the amount of time you spend cleaning up the the base coat. So here we go. You just um, See how wet that that is. We'll keep that right here. That is pretty, pretty wet. Um, it's like if I just put my finger on it, kind of just remove it. It's pretty flat. That's how I paint. Um, I paint with the paint really watered down and very thin layers. So, oops, I guess I covered an area that I didn't need to, but I was trying to show you guys. Don't be scared to go over the edge down here. You can clean that with um, with a toothpick later. But and this this is why I like using a bigger brush because this just takes a some time off covering the the area that I need to. Oh, it's a little bit it's a little bit too wet so I'll add some white titanium white is a pretty opaque paint thick so um, if your paint is too watered down if you add that titanium white it becomes thicker and you gotta let you gotta let this uh, the layers dry in between. Okay. I'll wait till that dries a little bit. Maybe blow on it. Um, I guess while we wait for that layer to dry, let me tell you what happens when the paint doesn't um it doesn't dry this nicely on the card doesn't apply this nicely. There are cards out there like foreign cards. I've run into a couple foreign cards. Um, some of the previous sets. Um, there's a Freya Lease I did on a card. Uh, there's a Freya Lease Altar I did. Um, I don't remember what set it was but it's a Planeswalker. Um, man the the paint beads up. It's like it's like the surface is really shiny or water resistant I'm not sure what it is it, it's, it must be like a different um, printing method but the paint would beat up like if you watch Terminator 
and after he shatters it just goes everywhere that's what I would do it just beads up and groups in little segments so um, I tried a couple of things to mitigate that but it didn't work so I just you know I dealt with it and what I did was very thin layers and um, very thin layers and I would just constantly blow on it so that the layer would dry almost immediately and as I with the brush as I saw the beads forming um, just like sp spread them out like don't let them fo form into beads and keep blowing and it'll, very thin layers and they'll dry almost instantly so after a couple layers of doing that uh, you won't have that resistance from the card anymore and you'll be able to keep going with the with the normal layers and, and base coat but anyways that's something I ran into that I wasn't expecting and I don't see that often but um, I have seen it and it was kind of frustrating but painting with thin layers will, will help so I'm making this lighter because I want to show you guys I want to make sure that you guys see when I trace this you guys can see the outline we're gonna let that dry a little bit um, while that's drying uh, I do want to mention one thing this is a quick um, area that a small quick area that I'm covering so I left the card on this um, on this paper that I like to set it on but if I were to cover the whole card or it's a borderless card and I need to cover the border I like to put it on my mock-up that I showed you guys on the list video just put the card on here and it's easier to cover the edges with the um, the base coat if it's raised up not not touching anything here um, so yeah use this do something like this if you're if you're covering a layer that's more complex if you do get a hair while you're doing your base coat, you want to remove it so it doesn't show up uh, on the final layers. Just, you know, either go over it and remove it with a little toothpick or with, even with the brush itself, push it out of the way and redo your layer. Um, you know, just even it out again. But, yeah, you don't want little hairs or anything like that. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I'll, you know, I'll miss a spot there'll be like a tiny dust particle or something and um, you know that, that makes it to the end but um, just try to smooth it out as much as possible um, okay so we got our mock-up over here it's covered with uh, charcoal and we're gonna do the uh, carbon tracing method alright so you've got your mock-up right over the card with the carbon in the back of the mock-up and the gray base coat on top of the card and you're ready to <clears throat> trace the image grab a pencil don't put too much pressure down because otherwise you'll mark the card just um, just very lightly you're just gonna trace the image be patient you know this is you're gonna have to do this a few times so just be patient make sure you get everything you can tell where you've gone through um, over the card by just angling the card towards the light and you'll see where you've traced it okay so I am done tracing the card and I think you can tell right there see the tail how it shines you can see if you've gone over every part um, yep you can see you get a little shine from the pencil um, Another thing that I, I'm not showing you guys on this video, but I have my computer right in front of me on my computer screen, and if I were to have that on, um, I would be able to see what I'm actually tracing. Sometimes the mockups are kind of small and you can't see the detail, so I like to use the the big image on my screen and make sure that I'm keep comparing both and make sure that I'm tracing everything that I've got everything covered. So I do that throughout the whole process during the tracing and during the painting and um, during the final tracing uh, outlining so we're ready to reveal see how our tracing um, came out whether it was successful or not so try to leave a couple of these pieces of tape still on here so that if something didn't go right you can lay it back down in the same spot it was. So I'm just gonna do this. 
Uh, yep, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let me show you guys. So, I'll take this guy off right here. Where's that piece of paper I used to trace this on? Let's put it on there. You can use this as a reference. Whoops, sorry about hitting the camera. You can use this as a reference um, for later. And I, I reuse these pieces of tape. I mean, why not? They're still good. Um, I'm cheap. <laughs> so I just reuse them. So can you guys see this? Um, I think you can. There is the outline of him. And just barely made the nose right there. So, yep, we can still see it. Okay, I've zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see better. Now, when you're outlining this and you're using these incliners, make sure, see all these squiggle lines? That's me cleaning the tip every time I do a new trace. So, let's try, I'll start over here. I like starting left to right because I don't want to smudge these guys. So whatever I do here, you know, I'll just move that way. And I hope you guys can see this. Let's see. Try my best from this angle. Very gently because I don't want, and I'll stop before, like, I think the edge goes up over here, so I'll stop before I get down to the bottom of the um, base coat. I guess if you have imperfections at this stage, it's not that big of a deal, because you still have to paint it with the colors and you have to do one more outline so it's okay you can make mistakes at this stage remember don't push down too hard because you'll remove the paint alright I think that's done and so it's not perfect. I think I made a few mistakes right there and in the arm. But you can correct them once you start adding the paint. I'm gonna let this marker dry for a few minutes. I mean, let's see. I'm gonna do like a little test right here to show you guys how these smudge. See? They smudge if I don't let them dry enough. Alright, so here we go. We've got the outline done, and now I'm going to show you how to remove the excess really quickly. Take, let me put this in view. Take the toothpick, damp it a little bit. You can, I don't know, you can even do it with your tongue if you want to. But very gently, you can start removing the excess base coat. Now I've gotten a little bit better at having a steady hand when cleaning the edges. Um, but you can use a ruler if you want. Uh, use a ruler, a ruler to help you guide the toothpick. You want to clean this up before you add the color. Why? Um, let's say you live in New England and it's snowing and you heard it's going to snow like two feet. But you're not going to wait till it's two feet of snow to shovel. If, you, if you're if you like some people I know, you're going to start shoveling, you know, when there's like a few, few inches of snow on the ground. So it's not hard for you to shovel at the end. So that's what I do here. I clean everything up, clean the edges before I add the color because this way I have thinner layers to clear. If I had thicker layers, the toothpick wouldn't remove them as smoothly and sometimes they chip. Um, you know, it's just not good. So just clean this up, add colors. 
clean up if you have to add more colors. Alright guys, so here it is after I cleaned it up with uh, the toothpick, cleaned up the excess uh, base layer. And so I think that's pretty pretty much it. We're ready to add the color. Alright, now we're ready to apply some color. Um, I've set the colors I'm going to need for this altar in my wet palette. I've got my titanium white and carbon black that I saved from last time from putting down the base coat. I've added some raw umber, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and quinacridone magenta, which I think I'll need for the mouth. When it comes to mixing colors, I know that it can be somewhat intimidating, intimidating to some beginners, um, especially when you're trying to do border extensions, which which requires you to match the colors of the card. It can be a little bit tough if, if you've never mixed colors. So I'm going to put in the description below a link to a guide of how to do a color chart for the colors you have available. So what you do is you take the colors you have available and you kind of mix mix them uh, like a percentage of each with each other um, and you can see what color outputs you can get from the paints you have. I've never done this but I think it can help you if you're having trouble mixing colors. For me, I find mixing colors uh, a little bit I don't know, it's just, it comes natural to me and I can most of the time get the right colors. So I've never done a chart, it's a little bit time consuming, but if you're having trouble, I recommend it. Uh, I'm going to be using my standard uh, zero um, round brush, size zero round brush. And I've got my sponge over here to clean the brush and my reference image so I can see what colors I need to get. So let's start by applying the white to the eyes. Again, I like to paint um, with I like to paint with my colors very watered down. So it'll take a few layers to get the the right color, and then just lightly touch it with your fingers so you can get um, texture with your fingerprints. That's why in the last video I said that I use a, a towel rag to clean my fingers all the time. You don't want to put your finger over a layer with um, if there's dry paint on your finger. Using the your fingertips to do this um, is done by several of my altering friends and it helps when it comes to blending. I'll show you as an example in a little bit. Um, but it's it's a really good technique to to get smooth um, transitions between two different colors if you're trying to blend. So I think we're done putting down the colors and what I'm going to do now is do the outline and you can either do this with the incliners or you can do this with uh, just black paint and your brush which is I think you have more control over the lines doing it with the brush. What I like to do here is each time I use the, the black paint to make these lines kind of just like paint a little bit on the side and, and make sure your brush is pointy then 
You just carefully go over the outline. You can also correct mistakes on your outline with uh, the toothpick. And if you gently scratch the top part, it'll take away the most recent layer. So you guys can see um, I've done the outline with the black paint. My palette is covered in little black paint streaks. Um, you can do this again if you want with a, a multi-liner. Um, I'm trying to get used to and get better at using the brush. Um, I, you might have seen that I did some mistakes in a couple of spots while I was starting. Uh, you can always correct them with, with a toothpick or redo the colors, just correct it, you know, just put a little bit more paint on a card and correct your mistakes. So here's the finish card. I'll take a picture and post it on my website, on my Facebook page later. Um, I did want to mention a couple other things before I finish this video. Keep your wet palette uh, um, filled with water throughout the whole process. Keep your layers thin. Uh, at the beginning of the video, if you notice, my black paint had spread. That's because I purposely did that last night. I didn't drain my wet palette. So if you leave it uh, with the water in here and you cover it, your paints will uh, spread and you know it, they'll combine and get a little bit messed up. But if you drain this as much as you can before covering it, your paints will last for a few days. Uh, Yep, so this is how I usually end up with the, with the palette. All the layers are kind of like watered down. If you add a little bit of water to, for example, this area that has dried, you can pick up a little bit of that paint if you want to reuse that color. All right, before we finish the video, I did quickly want to go over one other thing that I couldn't show you with this altar because there's a lot of flat colors. But, for example, the altar that I have on the screen right now, that use a lot of uh, skin tones and I had to do a lot of blending using the fingerprint method. So I quickly wanted to show you an example here really quickly. Uh, I've set down some skin tones and I started on the left and went to the right just adding a little bit of different colors and in between you just have to use your fingerprint uh, fingertips kind of finger paint like this. Very watered down paints um, and if you add a little bit of color to the un um, layers underneath, you know, you'll start getting a nice blending effect. The altar that I just recently did with the skin tones uses some red pink tones, so if you add just a little bit of, of pink, just, you know, the water down layer and and just with your fingerprints just kind of touch the paint and it kind of blends pretty well so that's how I do my my blending most of the time just water down layers and just dab it with your fingertip and mix colors you can add colors on top of this and it'll get different results so yeah you can practice this method if you want to get smoother transitions and color blending i know other people uh, that do alters use a airbrush like my friend fernando delgado he alters amazingly and he's been using a, an airbrush you can get very very smooth transitions like in this altar that I have up on the screen for him the background that he does he uses an airbrush and that gets way better results than using the the finger method so if you know how to use an airbrush you know it's a, it's a really good tool to have I'll put the description I'll put it in the description also a guide that he did I didn't realize that for my first video so I'll include it on in this video it's a really good guide He's been altering for a while too and I think it'll be useful for some of you that need some information. Okay, lastly I have a giveaway for those of you who are just starting out with altering. 
And in my previous video, I told you that I used Citadel paints when I first started, and that I no longer use these because I'm not using gold and fluid acry acrylics. But if you're looking to get started and don't have that many paints, then you know this is the perfect giveaway for you. I these are just sitting around, and I no longer use them. They, some of them might be a little bit dry, but I think you can add water and it should be okay. So if you are interested in some paints to alter your cards to get some experience in color mixing and stuff like that, um, just leave a comment in this video or on my Facebook page explaining why why you got into altering. That's as simple as that. Just short sentence, couple of sentences, a paragraph. Just leave a comment. But make sure you're subscribed to my Facebook page and my U and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Those are the only things I ask that you do besides leaving a comment. So good luck and I hope they serve you well. Alright guys, that's all I had for part two. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped some of you. I didn't have any more videos planned out, but if you'd like to see something else from me, just leave a comment below and I'll try my best to make other videos. Make sure you give uh, a thumbs up to this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and like my Facebook page, all in the description below. Thanks for watching, take care. Talent is a pursued interest. In other words, anything that you're willing to practice, you can do.